I'd like to uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today on a topic that I think will be of interest to all. I am uh, Dr. Charles Colombo, a staff ophthalmologist at William Beaumont Hospital in Troy, Michigan, and also an associate professor of ophthalmology at the uh, Oakland University uh, School of Medicine. Today we're going to discuss eye care for the aging eye. Now, if we look at this graph showing the United States population age 65 and over, it becomes quite evident that as time goes by, people in this country are living longer and longer. And as a result of this, one in three certainly may face some visual loss by the age of 65. And this is very important because consequences of loss of vision include curtailing of daily activities, social isolation, which leads to depression. Patients become less mobile and are more uh, prone to falls and fractures. And all this leads to independent living. And as we age and as eyesight begins to decline, this can, in rare cases, progress to legal blindness. Now, in addition, as time goes on in our life and as we age, many patients discover they are prone to systemic diseases. For example, high blood pressure, which is very, very common. And high blood pressure can lead to circulation problems in the back of the eye. Arthritis can lead to dryness of the eye. And diabetes, or high sugar, can lead to glaucoma and cataracts and, of course, diabetic eye disease. Today we're going to concentrate primarily on the four leading causes of loss of vision as we age age-related macular degeneration, which is poor circulation in the eye, glaucoma, or high pressure in the eye, cataract, and diabetic eye disease. Now, to discover these, it's important to visit your ophthalmologist and have a complete eye evaluation. And these are the things that ophthalmologists look at when you go for your eye exam visual acuity or level of eyesight, your eyelids and orbits, how well the pupils react, side vision or visual fields, motility, looking for any crossing of the eyes, and then the front of the eye, looking for cataracts, the eye pressures, and then the back of the eye, checking the status of circulation. How often should patients have their eyes checked? Well, if a patient's not having any visual difficulty at all, we recommend every one to two years. However, if there is a problem seen, the patient should be seen promptly. And the treatment goal, of course, is to optimize and give the patient the best eyesight that we can. Now, what are the common problems we see as we get older? One of them is ectropion, which is outturning of the lower eyelid. Ptosis, which is drooping of the eyelid. And these are conditions that are only cured by eye surgery. Cancers can also appear in the eyelid, as seen in the photograph here. And these also are very important to be caught at an early stage and operated on. And finally, dry eye, which is so common um, in the state of Michigan. And if this is not treated with lubrication, the cornea, the window of the eye, can be scarred and vision can be lost. So let's begin with the most common cause of visual loss, losing eyesight as we age. And this is age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. 
Now there's never total blindness with AMD, but central vision is lost. It's seen with advanced age and usually appears when we're in our 70s. It runs in families and is highly linked to smoking and cardiovascular disease. Now these photographs show what appears in the back of the eye with macular degeneration. In the middle of the slide on the left, you can see the accumulation of whitish spots. These are called drusen, which are the first sign of macular degeneration. And on the photograph to the right, you can see marked progression. And this patient would have blurred vision when they look straight ahead. There is no pain with macular degeneration. In fact, in the early stages, patients may have very good eyesight. And in the early stages, the chances of progression are low, only 5% within five years. But as macular degeneration progresses, the chances of involving the second eye increase to better than 50%. Macular degeneration is always subdivided into two types. The dry type, which is the good kind, which leads to gradual visual loss, and the bad type, which is the wet macular degeneration, which leads to more rapid sudden loss due to bleeding in the back of the eye. What are the symptoms? Well, again, an early in intermediate stages, there may be no symptoms at all. There might be some bending of straight lines uh, and also some slight difficulty with reading. But in the advanced stage, there is, as shown in the photograph here, a central blind spot. It's almost as if someone was taking a flash photograph and you look directly into the flash of the camera. Wherever you look, there is a bright blind spot. And this is exactly the way patients see with macular degeneration, except that the spot is there all the time. Side vision always remains okay, and there's never, never total blindness. How do we treat macular degeneration? Vitamins, special vitamins for the eye, called Preservision, are very, very effective. In fact, they stop the growth of macular degeneration 75% of the time. With the more severe wet type, laser may have to be done, and also possible injections with new anti-VEGF drugs, which are vascular endothelial growth factor, which stop the growth of the new vessels in the back of the eye. Recently, there's been some promising work with gene therapy, where certain uh, materials developed with the genetic basis are injected into the back of the eye and have been very effective at stopping the damage of the blood vessels. This photograph shows how patients see with macular degeneration. On the bottom, you can see how the little straight lines are gradually bent and distorted. And this allows patients to check their vision at home on a weekly basis. Treatment consists of proper glasses, low vision aids, and also treatment of anxiety when indicated. Now the next topic is glaucoma, or a high pressure in the eye. And this is the second most common reason for loss of vision in the elderly. It affects 10% of African Americans beyond age 70 and 2% of Caucasians beyond age 70. Early detection is critical and very important in stopping the progression of the disease. In the healthy eye, a clear liquid called aqueous humor circulates inside the front portion of the eye. To maintain a constant healthy eye pressure, your eye continually produces a small amount of aqueous humor and an equal amount of this fluid flows out of the eye through a microscopic drain called the trabecular meshwork in the drainage angle. If you have glaucoma, the aqueous humor does not flow through the drainage angle properly. 
fluid pressure in the eye increases and this extra force presses on the optic nerve in the back of the eye, causing damage to the nerve fibers. And this short film really indicates what happens in glaucoma. Primarily the drain channels in the eye get slowly clogged, fluid which is formed into the eye cannot get out, and the high pressure damages the optic nerve in the back of the eye. It is more common, as we mentioned earlier, in uh, African racial background, advanced age. It does run in families and is linked to diabetes and high blood pressure, as well as nearsightedness. The two photographs here are very important. On the right side is a normal appearing optic nerve, and this is the nerve responsible for eyesight. On the left is a very damaged nerve, and you can see the large white area in the middle of damaged nerve tissue. The nerve goes from a nice pink healthy color to a white pale color, indicating nerve damage, and this is irreversible loss of eyesight. And the most common type is the open angle type, which is very uh, insidious because it's pain free. The only way to diagnose glaucoma is to get your one to two year yearly eye exam. This photograph shows how side vision is tested in glaucoma. As glaucoma progresses, we tend to lose side vision first, and this is measured on a machine called a perimeter. The management, we have to stop the loss of side vision. We have to prevent further optic nerve damage. And this is accomplished by taking eye drops which lower the eye pressure. In severe cases, surgery may have to be done. Third, cataract. And I think cataract is a topic of concern to all of us because we know if we live long enough, just about everyone will develop cataracts. And it is the third most common cause of loss of vision. In the ages of 65 to 74, it's about 18%. But from 75 to 85, almost half of us will develop a significant cataract. And a cataract is a clouding of the lens which sits directly behind the pupil. When we're born, this lens is crystal clear, like a magnifying glass. But as a cataract develops, it turns yellow and then pure white. And in a cataract such as this, which is so dense, eyesight is basically lost. Unlike glaucoma, a cataract can eventually cause complete blindness, both straight vision and side vision. Uh, in early cases, we have disturbance of our reading vision or driving vision. And the degree of the cataract and the location of the cataract will determine how much it bothers us. Glare is also an early sign, especially with nighttime driving. Surgery is indicated if there is significant blurring of vision and the patient's unable to do their daily activities, such as passing a driver's test. There is no current medicine to dissolve a cataract. And this slide will show how cataracts are removed. Usually with cataract surgery, a small incision is made in the eye. The front portion of the thin outer covering of the lens is opened to allow removal of the cataract inside. The cataract is gently broken up and vacuumed out. Then a folded lens implant is inserted through the small incision and into the capsule where it unfolds and permanently takes the place of the clouded natural lens. With the cataract removed, the new lens implant clearly focuses light rays onto the retina. The power of the lens implant is selected for your individual eye. However, you will probably need glasses to get your best near and far vision. Just to elaborate a bit more on the video, uh, 
implants are custom designed in power for each individual person. And with the improvements in technology now, about 90 to 94% of patients do not need to wear glasses with the implant in their eye, except for reading. In addition, there are optional implants, not covered by insurance, which are bifocal in nature. And when these implants are used, glasses are not needed at all. They're not needed for distance, and they're not needed for reading. Uh, before people have their cataract removed, they are given a medical clearance with their primary care physician. Uh, the surgery is pain-free. The eye is numbed with eye drops. Relaxing medicine is given. Patients lie down, and the surgery takes around 10 minutes to perform. And the patient is allowed full activities the next day. And this shows, again, the artificial lens sitting in the uh, position exactly where the original cataract was, directly behind the pupil. 90% of patients will see 20, 40, or better without glasses, and that's enough to drive a car. 3% of the time, complications can occur, such as infection, high pressure in the eye, or detached retina, and these are all repairable. Now, the fourth and last most common eye disease that we see in the elderly is diabetic eye disease or diabetic retinopathy. And this can occur both in the juvenile or type 1 diabetes or in the adult type or type 2 diabetes. And this shows a photograph of the damage in the back of the eye from diabetic eye disease. Uh, in diabetic eye disease, the blood vessels in the back of the eye begin to break open and blood and fluid leak out of the vessels, causing loss of eyesight. If you're diabetic, we recommend that after you've been diabetic five years or more, you have the eyes examined once per year. Uh, good Control of the diabetes is very, very important, and this includes diet, exercise, and weight loss. Now, how do we handle patients who have had loss of vision from these four conditions we previously talked about? Of course, we always begin with proper glasses or spectacles. Contact lenses are an option, and for very poor vision, for example, for macular degeneration, telescopes, which attach to glasses, can be used, as well as electronic magnification devices, which are similar to a computer. We always recommend increased lighting, which is extremely important. For severe loss of vision, we have very powerful hand magnifiers, electronic computers, which magnify, as well as talking clocks and newer computers with voice recognition capabilities. So in conclusion, we are now aware that with age, vision can be decreased. We discussed the common eye conditions beyond age 50. Many of these conditions are preventable and treatable with regular eye care. Our goal is to improve and maintain visual function and the best way to achieve that is good coordination between primary care physicians and ophthalmology. Thank you very much.